Oh, okay, we're recording. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending the second session of Helping Your Parents Move. Um, uh, I think we had a great start last week and had lots of great information and sharing, which was wonderful. So uh, I invite you to do the same this time around. If you have any questions, um, just ask away with a small group uh, and or you can put it into the, um, the chat and then I will make sure that Robin gets the uh, gets the questions. So uh, I think I've met everybody, but I'm Anna. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Um, today we have uh, my uh, uh, session guest is Robin Oliverio. I've known Robin for, it seems like a lifetime, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe a year. And um, she does uh, amazing work with all of my clients. I send all of them there if I can. And um, she's been doing this for 12 years now and um, has lots of experience. And uh, I find one of the reasons I love to work with her is because she's very like me. She's very caring, um, puts a lot of effort into helping her clients, goes above and beyond. So um, I'm going to let um, Robin introduce herself a little bit. And I had asked her this morning to talk to us a little bit about why she does what she does because I think learning the why people do what they do is really important to sort of understand how they think and how they how they run their business so Robin I'm gonna pass it on to you awesome great thank you so much Anna thank you for the nice introduction uh, and thank you for taking the time to put this series together I think it's uh, very beneficial and helpful and the fact that it's recorded will help uh, other people get this information um, I promise I will be mindful of the fact that it's a beautiful sunny day and I, I won't uh, try and keep you here for the full hour, but uh, like Anna said, if you have questions, if there's anything like we're going to cover a few different topics, but if there's anything that, you know, particularly interests you and you want to dive in and ask questions, feel free to interject at any point. Um, I've just sort of prepared a high level review of some of the topics. Um, we'll dive into some things deeper, but again, if there's anything that, that seems like a, it might be of interest to you, then feel free to reach out to me at any point afterwards, uh, and we can take a little bit of a deeper look at it. But to give you a little bit of an introduction uh, on what it is I do uh, and, and why it is uh, and why I do what I do. Um, so for starters, some of you may have never worked with a mortgage broker before. So just to give you an idea of, of what I do, I'm licensed with over 57 different uh, financial institutions. So basically, I don't work for any particular one. I work independently of them. And that allows me to act truly in the best interest of the client. So it gives me a very large toolbox. Um, and it allows me to find a solution that works for you because I'm not only limited to one particular lender. Um, like Anna said, I have been doing this now for about 12 years and I'm very passionate about helping people find solutions that work for them. Uh, and one of the main reasons that led me uh, to this career and why I got into this business all stems back about 12 years ago uh, when I got the news that my father was diagnosed with ALS, so Lou Gehrig's disease. Some of you may or may not be uh, familiar with that, uh, that disease. And at the time, I was living in Toronto. I had just finished school, and I got the call, the dreaded phone call. And I was an only child, and my parents were separated. So I decided I would move back to Ottawa to help look after my father. And shortly after, I soon found out that ALS was a disease that, you know, could have a tremendous financial burden uh, on a family. There's a lot of expensive equipment uh, that's required and a lot of home care that's not, that's not covered. So I quickly learned that my dad was in, you know, quite a difficult financial position. Uh, and at the time I was quite green. I did not have the wealth of, of knowledge and experience that I do now. So, you know, just knowing that I wanted to help my dad, I, I marched into the bank and I explained his scenario and I was, you know, desperately looking for a solution for him because his ultimate goal was to stay in his home as long as he could. Um, and I wanted to, to help him achieve that. So I was quite 
uh, disappointed to find out there was really nothing they could do for me. And unfortunately, the person that I was dealing with did not kind of point me in the direction that, you know, there were options. It's just they, the bank themselves didn't have the option. But even, so but I think be learning from that, what I took away from that was that, you know, I know firsthand how difficult uh, finances can be on a family. Um, and whether or not you're dealing with a terminal illness or whether you're just dealing with uh, the decision of whether or not it's time to sell the beloved family home uh, or not, it, it can be very stressful. So I, uh, you know, taking away from that, I wanted to be able to help and assist clients and not only give them expertise, but give them a wide variety of options to know that, you know, you don't have to just make the decision to sell the home right away. There, there can be a lot of, of great products out there that can give you options to do whatever makes the most sense for your family. So I am I'm passionate about helping people achieve that and also just taking that stressful piece out of the equation. You know, I can kind of help make those decisions for you and help guide you uh, in the best you know, direction for you and your family. So the first topic I wanted to chat about today are reverse mortgages. Uh, and reverse mortgages, oftentimes when we hear that, we just immediately think bad things. You know, we've all heard the horror stories and we maybe have some preconceived notions. So to give you an idea, reverse mortgages have been available in Canada for the last 30 years. Um, Home Equity Bank is one of the main providers. Uh, as of recently, there are a couple other providers um, that do offer reverse mortgages, but they're the main, you know, the main one that's been around the longest. So they are actually a Schedule 1 Canadian bank. And they're subject to strict financial rules. Whereas in the US, our neighbors in the US have a number, they, have, they used to have hundreds of different uh, reverse mortgage providers, and they weren't regulated the same way uh, that we have them here in Canada. So a lot of the horror stories that you may have heard uh, often stem from situations that were isolated to uh, the unregulated types of lenders that we have in the US. And one of the reasons they can be so beneficial uh, is that oftentimes at this stage uh, in your life, clients find themselves asset rich and cash flow poor. And a reverse mortgage can be a huge help in this situation. And when I think back to the situation I lived through with my father, uh, you know, and the fact that he owned his own home and there was a ton of equity, but he did not want to sell, a reverse mortgage would have been, you know, a perfect solution for him at the time. So I wanted to first sort of dive into some of the common myths and, and misconception that we might hear about. So number one that I get a lot is that there's a concern you no longer own your own home. Um, and this simply isn't true. So you continue to own your home, you hold title and you have full control over it just as you would with a regular mortgage. Uh, the bank cannot force you to sell and you can live there as long as you wish. So the only obligation is to keep your home well maintained and to continue paying property taxes and insurance, but you still own the home. There's no change there. The probably the biggest myth and misconception that we also hear about is that you could end up owing more than your house is worth, which is a scary one. You don't want to leave, uh, you know, a big bill or, or, or have a bill left to the estate. And this is also false. So with the you know, chip reverse mortgage from Home Equity Bank, they guarantee uh, that as long as homeowners have met their obligations, so paying property taxes and keeping insurance and keeping the house in good, good condition, they will never owe more than the home is worth. Um, so statistically speaking, uh, the truth about reverse mortgages is that about 99% of clients who have taken reverse mortgages end up with equity when they go to sell it. And on average, they still have well over 50% of the value of their home left to enjoy or left to the estate after the, you know, the home is sold and the loan is repaid. So those are two of the biggest ones that we often hear. Uh, and, and they're just, those two are not true. Um, a few of the benefits of a reverse mortgage one of them would be that you receive the money tax-free. 
So it's not added to your taxable income and it's not going to affect your old age security or guaranteed income supplement that you might receive. Um, another thing is it protects you from having to cash out investments, which may trigger other tax implications. So I know currently right now for a lot of people, it's not a great time to be cashing out investments, especially after the, the pandemic, right? So you can protect your investment portfolio and access money that's tax-free. Uh, the money can pretty much be used however you'd like. So a lot of times we see individuals take out reverse mortgages, uh, for example, for renovations to allow them to remain in their home. Um, modifications to the home, again, another option is to purchase a vacation property. We see that sometimes, so for the, full, the family to enjoy. You can, it can be used to pay off higher interest debt without having to sell the home. It can be used for an early inheritance, and it can also be used for in-home medical care and equipment uh, to remain in the home. So you can receive the funds in a lump sum payment, or you may wish to have it done as periodic payments that are spread out you know, throughout the year. The biggest benefit uh, I think to people and why they may choose a reverse mortgage is that no payments need to be made. So the entire time that you take out the mortgage, you, you have the option to make payments if you wish, but usually the reason why you would choose to go this route is so that you do not need to make payments. So this is gonna help optimize cash flow and it can allow you, know, allow you to live your life to the fullest. The interest accrues uh, and is paid out whenever the mortgage is closed off. So if you sell the home or you know, if uh, one of the owners pass away, then the mortgage is paid out just like regular. If, if you already have an existing mortgage, it doesn't mean that you're not eligible for a reverse mortgage. In this situation, if, it, if it's now more beneficial to have a reverse mortgage and to not continue having to make mortgage payments, um, basically the first step we would do is we would pay out your existing mortgage and replace it with the reverse mortgage where you would then no longer have to make payments. Uh, the setup fees are not nearly as much as one might think. Again, a lot of the companies in the U.S. have, it, they're, un, they're unregulated, some of them, and the fees can be quite substantial. So usually there's about an administration fee of about $1,795. And then there would be an appraisal and independent legal advice. So all in, you're probably looking under $3,000. So de depending on whether you're looking at downsizing and some of the fees that might be involved in that, you know, overall, there, it's quite manageable. Uh, and in short, you can access a reverse mortgage as soon as you turn 55. And then again, they, they like to kind of follow conservative lending practices. Similar to a lot of the financial institutions in Canada, the maximum amount they're ever going to loan is 55% of the value of your home. There are some exceptions to that rule, but the goal is to have le equity left over. So a key takeaway from reverse mortgages, it, it may not be the right option for all homeowners, but it is a very powerful tool if used correctly. Uh, and it can provide a tremendous amount of relief for those who wish to stay in their home. So I could, you know, that's just a, a high level review of the basics. There are a ton of different options, uh, you know, that I could go on for hours and hours about, but that's just kind of a general idea. Does, does anyone have any questions about the topic of reverse mortgages specifically? I don't think so. Yeah, just yet. Okay, all right. And I just would like to repeat what Robin said. I think um, it's so important, especially for people uh, like us who are dealing with our parents. And if our parents really wanna stay at home and age at home, this is a great option that some people don't know about is that they could do a reverse mortgage and take some of that stress off, off of the initial sort of, how are we gonna make this work type thing. So right. yeah, great idea. Yeah. Um, so the next thing that we could look at doing as well um, is setting up a preventative secured line of credit. So this is often something that we suggest to clients when they're at the point in their life when they're paying off their mortgage. They don't have a need for a mortgage necessarily. They're paying it off, 
Um, but by setting up this secured line of credit after paying off the mortgage, you can achieve two things. So the first thing is you can actually protect, protect against title fraud. So oftentimes, uh, the elderly who have new mortgages, uh, they can be targeted for victims of mortgage and title fraud. So if you add a secured line of credit after you pay off the mortgage, it can protect against this. Um, the other thing is it's kind of a, it's a low cost way of setting up a safety net for future unexpected expenses. So, you know, if you set it up now, whenever you don't need it, uh, you aren't in a panic to find a solution if and when there's a crisis that hits or if and when all of a sudden we need to make a modification to the home. You're not jumping through hoops trying to figure out if you qualify at that point. And the nice thing about it is if you're still at that stage in your life where, um, where you would qualify for it, then you can set it up at that point when you're able to, to do the paperwork and get it all done. And then it's there for a rainy day. And if you never use it, you're never going to be charged extra interest. It's it's works similar to a regular line of credit, but the fact that it's secured to the property allows it to carry a very low interest rate and you can have a higher limit. Um, so for example, if you were to set up a 100,000 line of credit secured to your home, you could have it set up. If you never use it again, you're never going to be charged interest on it. But if you were to borrow 50,000 for renovations, let's say, your minimum obligated monthly payment would be $122 a month. So that's interest only. Of course, you wouldn't be paying back the principal, but it is, you know, a good way of accessing money to do renovations without having to have a, a very high monthly cost. And it could be a short term solution if it's something that needs to be done right away. And then you can assess whether or not it's something that would make sense to convert to a reverse mortgage or on the flip side. Um, if you're then going to turn around and sell the home, but let's say you've, you've decided to um, add a, a, a bathroom on the main level so that now that property can be can kind of act as a bungalow. So you're not only improving the value of the home by adding the bathroom, but if you then go to sell the home in a couple of years, a secured line of credit is fully open for repayment at any time. So there's no penalty to pay this off and it's very flexible in that you can just sell it and close it off. The setup fees for this are quite low. Uh, usually it involves an appraisal and possibly a small legal fee because you are registering it on title of the home. But it's usually, you know, you can be set up for between five and nine hundred dollars all in. And then again, if you never use it, you're never going to pay interest on it. But it is there that you can use um, without having to jump through all those hoops at the time. So unlike a regular mortgage, you have to qualify for it uh, when you set it up. But in several years when you may need it, you don't have to requalify. It's there for you to use it if you like. Um, unlike a reverse mortgage, you do need to make payments. So it can, you know, the payments are minimal if you only have to make interest only, which can be great for cash flow purposes, but you do need to make payments. So if all of a sudden you were to stop making payments, the bank could call that product. Um, meaning they could ask you to repay it in full at any time. Whereas with the reverse mortgage, you're never ever going to have that problem. You never have to make payments throughout the full life of the mortgage. Whereas with the line of credit, you would. Um, so again, it, it may be the right solution for some and, and not for others. Um, again, if you do set up a secured line of credit, you could do, so the life cycle might be pay off the mortgage, set up that secured line of credit to have uh, for future use. If you do end up using it and you, you know, wanted to stay in the home, then you could always set up, you can convert it to a reverse mortgage later on. It doesn't mean that you now aren't eligible for a reverse mortgage. So does anyone have any questions on the secured line of credit option and how that might, how that might work? I think no? so. That's pretty clear. Would, would there be any would there be any challenges in people getting it? Would there be any sort of roadblocks that people might run into uh, to be able to get that? 
So you would have to, you have to qualify based on the income that you're earning. Okay. So with the reverse mortgage, with the home equity bank product, there's no income. Well, there's very minimal income requirements. You basically just have to be able to show that you can afford the property taxes and the insurance on your home. Okay. Whereas with a secured line of credit, we're going to fall into the same standard criteria that any bank is going to require for income qualification. So it can be a little bit harder to qualify for. And it's sometimes why people set it up earlier on more as a, a future kind of save it for a rainy day type of thing where they don't have to requalify when at that point they may not no longer be earning as much income and they don't necessarily qualify. Okay. Um, there is a, a, a someone online that's asking: Is there is there any concerns when you go to sell the home with the line of with credit? the secured line of credit? Yeah. No. So the only thing you have to keep in mind is that it will have to be closed. So it's registered, unlike an unsecured line of credit where you would have a lower balance. When you pay the house off, the the, the line of credit would have to be paid out from the proceeds. So there's no penalty. Um, there would be no other concerns other than the fact that it would need to be paid out. Okay, wonderful. Karen, does um, that answer your question? Is, pardon me? I was just asking to Karen if that answered her question. I, we'll, we'll see. I think so. Yes, thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, and then the other question or the other, um, the other thing we can look at as well is if you are thinking that, you know, keep hanging on to the family home and, and keeping the home is something that makes sense for you, there is of course always the option of just a regular mortgage for home renovations or modifications. So that would just be sort of a standard mortgage uh, similar to the line of credit in that you do have to qualify under income qualifications. So with this option, it's going to give you the lowest interest rate, but you do have to make payments like you would a regular mortgage and you do have to qualify. So as let's say you own your property and it's worth about 450000 and you have, you know, an idea to, to do a fairly sizable renovation to make the house livable for you, you know, for the next 10 plus years. If the house is worth 450000 we can finance up to 80% of the value of the home. So that would be 360,000 that we would be able to secure as a mortgage to do renovations or whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, you're gonna get the lowest interest rates if you go this route, like it won't be as, as uh, potentially, the rate will be lower than it would be with a reverse mortgage or than it would be with a, a line of credit. Um, which is great. However, you do have to qualify. So sometimes, let's say in this scenario, the children want to keep the family home as an investment. Uh, sometimes they'll be added to title at this point, uh, and they can also be added to the mortgage to help their parents qualify. So sometimes this is something that we see um, and it can be done very easily if the individual owners don't qualify. Um, it, it's a pretty straightforward, it's basically just like any standard mortgage, it's no different. As long as there's equity in the home, you can use the money to do whatever you like, including renovations or anything of that nature or for investment purposes. Um, so it is certainly the cheapest option, um, but it may not be suitable for everyone. It, you may not qualify or it just may not be the right option. So in, in, if you were to go that route, and you wanted to make some renovate or make some modifications or do some renovations to the home to, to stay there and, and live in it longer. We also want to consider the exit strategy. So when we're when we're um, considering setting up a mortgage, we also want to consider the exit strategy, which is when the house will be sold and the mortgage will be paid off. So we want to make sure that whichever option we go with that we have a sound ex exit strategy because a mortgage can create a large penalty. So a lot of people don't realize that, but if we're going with a fixed rate mortgage, um, they can trigger large penalties. So for example, right now the 10 year fixed rate mortgage terms are quite low. Uh, and for someone who's lived through the 14% plus interest era, 
they might be very tempted to go with the 10 year fixed rate because you know below you know 2.5 or 2.3% for 10 years sounds fabulous uh, and that might be you know tempting however if we look at the interest rate we also want to look at the overall cost of borrowing and if there's a chance that the house may be sold in the next 2 to 3 years then we want to avoid any large penalties to pay out those mortgages. And a 10 year fixed term is gonna create, if you pay it out in the first five years, a substantial penalty. It could be above, depending on the mortgage size and all the terms and all that, it could exceed 40, $50,000, which is very significant. So it's really important that when we're planning this, we're not only looking at the initial cost, but also what's, what's it gonna look like for um, the exit strategy and preserving as much of that equity that you've worked so hard uh, to pay down and to achieve essentially. Um, so that's something that's really important to consider when planning. And then the last thing, and this is sort of, it's kind of a loaded question, whether we should rent or whether we should buy. So should we sell and downsize and buy another property or should we, keep the property and renovate it? Or should we sell and rent? So again, it's a loaded question. And honestly, I don't necessarily think there's a right or wrong answer to that question. Um, owning and downsizing to another property that you own, it might be a great way to continue building equity. And it gives you, can, it allows you the ability to maintain complete control of your home. Um, for some people, the thought of having to use financing to stay in your home or to purchase another home might be too stressful, right? And that's okay. If that's not something that you're comfortable with, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm here to show you ways, you know, there are ways to achieve, you know, to continue owning a home and continue building equity in the property, which can be excellent long-term but at the end of the day, if, if that all seems like too much, then there's there's nothing wrong, um, you know, with selling and renting. And oftentimes when I work with clients on an individual basis, we'll sit down and we'll weigh out the pros and cons of either option. And we'll make, you know, an informed decision for what makes the most sense for them, because there is no perfect answer for each person. Everyone's going to have their own criteria. And, and that's something that I really enjoy sitting down and, and doing the, the rent versus buy decision. So in, in closing, um, I mean, we can't all be experts at everything. And, and Anna has put together a team of professionals who really excel in their respective fields. And I would encourage you to reach out and rely on the expertise of these individuals to get you through you know, what can otherwise seem like a very stressful time. And when I went through this myself with my own experience with my father and with my family, um, I wish I had had a team of professionals that I could have relied upon because you don't have to make these decisions on your own. And that's what we're here to help with. Um, there's many options when it comes to financing and I've done this for a long time now. So I think working with you know, an experienced mortgage professional, the financing may not be applicable to you at this point in, in, in what you're going through, um, but it, it very well may be. And I'm just here to kind of explain that there are many solutions um, and that I can kind of help guide you through that process. Well said, Robin. And also sort of with my idea of putting this program together is to really help people put together a plan. Yeah. Uh, I know some of you on the call are here to gather information to be able to help your parents. Some of you are here to help yourselves. And, you know, it's that plan. It's the building the plan. So, so even if you might not be ready now or your parents might not be ready, gathering this information and talking to professionals and saying, okay, well, this is kind of what we want to do five years from now. What, where where do I stand as far as being let, uh, eligible? And if not, what do I need to do to get there? And oftentimes I'll send clients to Robin and say, like, they're, they're not quite ready yet, but they need uh, a roadmap of how to get there. And so that's 
greatly um, beneficial to people, regardless of where you stand on this perspective and where you're at. So um, like Robin said, um, I highly recommend you, you know, finding people that you trust. And, you know, I've had clients that have gone to banks and, you know, are using a mortgage person at a bank because they walked in and that was the person on duty that night and, and they don't have a warm and fuzzy feeling relationship and they don't really understand what's going on. So really just, I know this is sounds almost like, of course, everyone knows this, but just a reminder, like, make sure you're working with someone that you totally trust. And, and like I said before, last week, we know what we know, we know what we don't know, but we don't know what we don't know. Right. So just a, a general conversation with, with an expert, Robin, or a real estate agent, or a financing or a lawyer, just a conversation about this is where we're at. What am I missing? What don't I see? What can you educate me on? Because we don't know, we're not in the fields. And oftentimes we're sort of, if we're, we're dealing with our parents, we're kind of putting out fires. So we don't have a lot of time and energy to be doing research. So highly recommend you reaching out to um, people in your circle that you trust. Um, again, if, reach out to me, reach out to Robin. I've put Robin's information on the chat line. If you wanted to reach out to her and ask specific questions in private, um, please do. If you can't find her information just reach out to me and I'll put you to put you guys together um yeah because financing's mortgage and financing is a tough one there are a lot of misconceptions especially about reverse mortgages I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there and at the end of the day it's a great it's a great way to go for some people so um it's good to know all the information were there any other questions or concerns or comments anything about today's chat no, we're just learning a lot. Good. Good. <laughs> that's, back, that's back to school. That's what we set out to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And okay. again, like Anna said, if there's any anything that comes up, any questions or any sometimes people prefer to ask those questions in private. I'm happy uh, to have a conversation. And like you said, like Anna said, you know, you, you may not need the information right this moment, but it may be for future planning. And that's that's what it's all about. So I'm always happy to take a call. Uh, or you can email me at any point and I'm happy to assist uh, in any way that I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. How did you, I'm going to put you guys all on the spot now. How did you find today's information? Was it too much? Was it helpful? Was it okay? Oh, it, it's helpful. Um, yeah, no, it's not too much. No, this is, this is great. Um, yeah, um, you know, some of the things would apply to us, some wouldn't. Uh, we're particularly looking at um, whether to, whether to own or rent. Yeah, you know, that's that's a big decision. There's all kinds of things in there. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And when we have our uh, which session is that? That will be with my friend um, Column, which will be April twenty first. Okay. Uh, he'll also be able to talk to you about the uh, the rent versus buy, because um, that mm -hmm. really is sort of looking at where you are financially, what your plans are, what you want your lifestyle to be, sort of all of that encompassing. So that really comes into play as well. Um, right. Okay. So and I do have, um, I've got a kind of a spreadsheet tool that I usually run through with clients. I, I wasn't, I mean, I didn't, I could have shown it today, but it's a little, um, it's, it's more something to do on a one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm, I'm happy to go through that. And I think sometimes it is run or buy it. Like I said, it's a loaded question, but when you work out the numbers on, on paper in front of you, sometimes that helps to give some clarity on which option makes the most sense for you. So that's a, that's a tool that, you know, I'd be happy to go through with you at any point. All right. That, no, that's great. Thank you. Okay. I did give you the wrong date for, um, column session. I will looking at a wrong one it's um end of march i think his session um, okay so thank you everyone for making time today to join us i will send out the recorded uh video this time i did it yay um thank you. <laughs> you know, a reminder about next week and please feel free to share these videos with anybody you'd like invite people out to the meetings the more the merrier the more we can uh share the better and i wish you all a very good day you too. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. the weather. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.